Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 2 of Cosplay Basics. Today we're going to be talking about heating and shaping foam using things like heat guns and hair dryers, the difference between them. I get a lot of questions about this in the comments, but also other things like ovens and how much or how little to heat the foam in order to get articulation and other shapes, and how the heat affects different thicknesses of foam. <clears throat> and I get some questions sometimes like, can I use a blowtorch? I would say no, not to use direct open flame, especially anything that high of heat near EVA foam. It will most certainly melt, combust, catch fire, you know, bad stuff. So if this is something that's of interest to you, please stick around because we're going to be heating and melting and shaping and doing all kinds of crazy fun stuff with some foam scraps. Okay, so one of the first and most common things I get asked is what is the difference between an actual heat gun like this drill master and a hair dryer? And I get this question for several reasons. One, they don't have the money to go get one or whatever particular country they live in, these are much more expensive. In the US, this drill master on sale at Harbor Freight is like 10 bucks. And full price is, I think, usually between 15 and 20. Same thing you can go find them at places like Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. However, uh, heat guns like industrial strength ones range up to 500, 1,000 and up. Of course, those are for like, you know, uh, heating plastic on wrapping entire pla uh, pallets to be shipped and things like that. It's stuff you wouldn't need a heat gun for in cosplay unless you were doing something really over the top. And this, of course, is a regular old hair dryer. This is a little bit more uh, powerful, I think, than a regular hair dryer. This was picked up by a individual with a cosmetology license that can go to the state, so, uh, state beauty supply store and get things that they usually don't always sell to the public. So I believe this is more on the commercial end, but I'm not 100% sure. This was donated to me like so many other things. And to show you the, the, the just exact difference here, I'm going to take a couple pieces of the same color scrap foam that I have, and I'm going to run first the hair dryer over it for five seconds and show you what that looks like and what happens. Okay, and I'm going to be putting this on high heat and uh, full speed. Okay, so that was about 10 seconds, and you see the foam is slightly warped. I'm just going to put a basic curve in it, and we're just going to see how much that's going to stay. Um, okay, so with 10 seconds of heat from this, it did slightly, uh, like I say, warp the foam. Uh, what happens when you heat it is, it causes all the pores on the outside for example, on this side, which I was heating to a constrict, which will naturally already put a slight curve into it. And this is great for heating and rounding out areas um, where you have the V cuts and the seams, like in these masks here, you can barely see it on my red hood, but it is there. You'll get a little knob, uh, kind of, kind of a, a bump. It's not truly round. To get it more round, you have to heat it and shape it like that. And you can use a hairdryer for that. That is something that a hairdryer works pretty decently for. You usually have to heat the foam from the inside and the outside, and it does take a lot longer. Now, take another piece of scrap EVA foam. This is 5 millimeter, the same thickness as the red here, despite the fact that they are different colors. They are the same width, and I'm going to heat this for about the same amount of time, about 10 seconds, with the drill master on high heat. Okay, so for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to take this 5mm foam and I'm going to go ahead and roll it the opposite direction from the side I'm going to be heating it just to show you how much this will flatten out with just 10 seconds of heat on high from a heat gun. Okay, in 10 seconds... This foam is fully pliable and can be shaped in pretty much any manner <laughs> I'm going to crinkle it into. And you'll notice too, this, I literally just held the hairdryer as close as possible on one spot. And the difference and the contrast between the two is quite a bit. You can see here that this foam looks very similar to what it did originally. There's not too much difference as far as like the look and all that stuff. But if you look at this one, 
you will notice that there's creases from whenever I touched it and probably even some fingerprints smashed into here. Uh, and it is holding its shape pretty well. Even if I bend it back, it's still wrinkled right back into, in, into that shape. The heat gun gets it hotter faster, but not just hotter faster, it's at a high enough temperature that <coughs> it is really, really permanently uh, gonna hold the shape because it penetrates, the, the, the heat penetrates more deeply into the foam. Now this also causes a danger and the fact that if you heat it too much, you can literally melt the foam. It'll start to shrink up and it can even combust and catch fire. So <laughs> until you're used to your heat gun and the settings on it, definitely practice with some scrap foam before you start ruining your projects or putting yourself in any kind of danger. But the heating is necessary to put shapes into the foam. And I talk about it on video, but a lot of times I don't show it. I just explain what I do. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go for an eyebrow shape in this piece of scrap foam. And I will be using a Drill Master heat gun, of course, for that as well. Now, the eyebrow shape that I'm talking about is this one here. It's kind of an L shape. It helps push out this brow so that whenever the light catches it, you can see that, that, that nice brow definition on this mask and also on this one here as well. Gives it shape and form and definition and just, you know, helps it to not look like it is a flat shell. Now, once I have my foam nice and hot, I would take one finger from the rear, kind of into that L shape, and I would push down from the front of the mask as I'm doing it to then have this brow shape. And I explain in the video, I say, yeah, I put my finger behind it, and I heat the foam, and I push up and push down, but that's what I'm actually doing. I don't really show on camera. And part of the reasons that I don't show these things on camera is that people complain that it just takes way too long. It takes way too long to get through the video, and the video ends up being like an hour, an hour and a half. And I understand that, and especially if you're experienced. Why would you want to watch something you already basically have an idea of? You're going to have your own techniques or already have a knowledge of how to do that. But if you don't, these are things that are pretty crucial. Next thing I'm going to talk about using some 3 millimeter scrap foam is differences in the amount of heat to achieve the same thing. To get the same type of definition in a mask that I have made out of, say, 3 millimeter instead of the 5 millimeter, it's going to take a lot less heat to get the foam hot, and you can actually get much more extreme shapes. You can get a much more defined brow shape much more easily out of a 3mm EVA foam mask. However, the 3mm is much more flimsy, and it's also much more likely to, once a little bit more heat hits that area, start to come undone again. Whereas a 5 holds its shape unless you get it pretty hot again, and especially higher once you get into thicker foams as well. Once you put that shape in, it takes a whole lot of heat to get it out. And 2 millimeter, even more so than this, has the tendency to lose its shape, even after I have heated it. Part of the way I remedy this is I will reinforce on the rear side of whatever it is that I'm working on. For example, if this was the outside of the mask and I was making out of 3 or 2, once I had got my brow shape in, I would glue some reinforcing pieces of EVA foam on the back side that would help hold it in place. Another thing you can do is resin. You can mix a two-part resin and pour that in, and it will help hold it in place. You can use hot glue as long as it's low temp, but even then, you run the risk of losing some of the fine shape that you've gone ahead and put into your projects. And one other cool thing that you can do with most household items once you get foam hot is texturing. Whether you're using some regular old household item like a fork, 
once you get the foam hot, not only can it be shaped, it can also be impressioned. And you can also purchase foam that has already been heat impressioned with a particular texture or pattern. It's just a little harder to find. Here I'm going to take this flashlight and while the foam is hot, roll it across to get that cool pattern on it. This is something that's great to use for like grips on like prop knives or prop swords or prop pistols or anything that you may be making out of EVA foam. Or maybe you have a predator costume and you want some like, I don't know, cool filler piece in between something where you need some kind of like definition that you just don't want to sit there forever and try to cut intricately in all these lines with an X-Acto knife and then try and heat it and get it to open it up and look that consistent. Like this is highly consistent and all I did was heat and shape it. However, <laughs> you can't texture something before you heat shape something. If you do that, you're gonna lose all your texture in the heat shaping. And if you get the entire foam all the way through too hot or you haven't reinforced it from the back, whenever you're gonna do your texturing, you will then lose your shape consequently. Uh, consequently. So that is kind of a double-edged sword. And this is where it gets a little bit more advanced when you're trying to heat shape and texture something. Texture something to make a flat grip, like I say, for like, you know, a knife blade or a prop pistol. Sorry, not knife blade, but knife grip or a prop pistol. That's great, but when you start to heat it and shape it after you textured or trying to texture something you've already shaped, Ooh, then it gets tricky and that requires some practice and some skill. Now that I've heated the front side of this and put some different texture in, let's go ahead and do the back and do something a little different with this one. taking some aluminum foil, you can get some rather interesting texture and patterns out of your heated foam, uh, depending on how you do it. This I did really large and rough. If you were to compress it more and make it a little bit more fine, it would look less like some crazy gnarly uh, surface or skin and more like, say, leather. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is use an oven to heat up some foam and this one is at 325. And I've already placed, while the oven is heating up, a pan upside down inside the oven so it's nice and hot. And I'm going to place my foam disc onto it and use this to heat the whole piece. This can be useful for several things. One, if you happen to have a round disc that you need to be domed, this will help you to dome it. However, you're going to need to cut it much larger than what you want the end result to be because the foam is immediately going to shrink. And it literally only takes seconds in the oven and the foam is extremely hot. You need to really wear work gloves or something to handle it to be safe. I, on the other hand, am insane and I never use work gloves, partially because my hands are semi-destroyed from a lifetime of manual labor. They, that's about as straight as my fingers go. They've all been busted and broken and have not healed 100% straight. And I don't have much feeling in the nerve endings at this point. Interesting self history lesson if anybody cares. Go ahead and pop this open. Throw this in on my tray. Let that sit for a few seconds. And I also have a round object here that I'm going to use to assist in making this curved the rest of the way, which is going to bring us to our second point which is that if you get an area of foam hot enough, you can kind of mold it over most objects. Okay, that's gonna need another 10 seconds or so. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't take very long to get the foam very hot. Uh, I believe in an older video, I used a heated piece of foam to Shape for a green lantern mask, or I'm not really sure what. Okay, so there you can see it already has a nice curved shape, but it's not a true dome. I'm going to go ahead and press this out on my round object here with my hand. Okay, now you can see the definite dome shape I've achieved, and it's nice and consistent. 
and it's quick. And if you needed to do a bunch of these, it's going to be much quicker to have the throw in four, five, six <laughs> at once and have several of these to use to heat them and just pull them out and shape them real quick, throw them down, shape them real quick, throw them down. And you could have all of these, say if you're going for like a Thor, you know, old school Thor comic costume, like 80s style, and you want those big round, bam, there you go. Nice, quick, easy, no patterns needed. Okay, so next we're going to do a flat piece of foam. And <laughs> this is going to be used to make a shell wrap for this for a holster. Not that I actually want a holster for this. I'm just using this particular thing as an example. Or, as I've already stated, you could also take your piece of foam once it is hot and you could put it on a pre-existing mask, for example. If it was like a rigid shell plastic face mask and you wanted some sort of features off that, you can impression that in and incorporate that into your actual mask that you're making. <laughs> I've used this to make multiple holsters for multiple prop guns and including in a couple of my videos that are a bit older. Uh, I had actually intended on doing it for the Han Solo blaster, but I never actually got around to it. Otherwise, it would have been in that video as well. All right, now my foam is hot and pliable. I'm going to take pressure and mold this to it as best I can while it is hot. Okay, and there, you can see the impression matches up quite nicely with the actual lines on, if I can get this straight, on the blaster itself. And you have a nice snug thing, once you would put it in, it would stop right there. And you can even see on the other side just how well it picks up the actual detail itself from the actual blaster. So that's what I like about the oven, is that the heat gun heats one side and then the other side. And to get it hot all the way through, you've really got to keep flipping it at a certain pace and speed. To get it like that, I always end up getting one side too much more than the other. This is enough to get it hot, keep it rigid, but it's still somewhat flexible. It hasn't like shrunk. Whenever I end up using a heat gun, I end up shrinking the five practically down to three or two just to get it hot enough to get the same effect as I do from an oven. Okay, so let's talk some common sense safety stuff and precautions here, especially when using the heat gun. First of all, the end of this heat gun right up here gets extremely hot. Don't ever touch it. Uh, and make sure that it doesn't touch anything. If you leave it close to or have it touching an object, it's going to possibly melt, burn, warp, catch fire, that project. Touch to yourself and another person, you will injure them. Or yourself. And this is a nice, sturdy, hardwood table, okay? But even at that, a lot of times, I lay it so this end is hanging off of it and the heat is dissipating. The heat doesn't have a place to rebound or, or, or get collected at and really heat up this table. Another thing you can do is put some foil down on your workspace. And foil has a tendency to blow around, so you'd probably want to tape it there, okay? And I mentioned earlier that you can catch the foam on fire, melt it, etc. I'm going to do a quick demonstration over the foil to show you how much heat this can or can't take. If I don't drop my foam first. Okay, so I have heated that pretty much to the point that it's smoking. Now, it was all the same thickness, 5 millimeter. You look it up here, it's about 2 now, and it's just a burnt, gross mess, okay? However, <laughs> if you need a burnt, gross, nasty mess, for whatever reason that that may be, you can heat the foam to the point that it does that. However, whenever it's, whenever it's cooled, 
it's hard and it's brittle. So if you don't protect that with something, coat it, seal it with something, it can crack and break very, very easily. And it's also not good to heat the foam this much or stretch it this much on any area that's going to have any flexibility or movement because that's going to cause this to creak and crack and break and get ugly and nasty and ruined really, really quick. However, I do want to point out it is kind of next to impossible to get the foam this hot using a hair dryer. You pretty much have to use a heat gun. The amount of time it would take and whatever way you would have to concentrate the heat onto the foam would probably start a fire in the hair dryer itself because hair dryers just aren't meant to run that hot. But <laughs> yeah. So before I go any further, I'd like to talk about a very important concept that's called reading the instructions. Seriously though, I get a lot of questions, whether it's ranging from contact cement to uh, heat guns or anything that are kind of answered either on the box or in the instructions on the label or in the included instructions that came with said product. And that's really important for safety concerns. Uh, I've gotten questions about contact cement and it doesn't stick. I'm like, what did you do? I put it on there, I stuck it together, I held it. No, you need to read the instructions. You apply it to both services, you let it sit for 15 minutes, and then you bond them. You also need to read the precautions and the warnings, which will tell you things like don't touch the end of the heat gun, don't operate near water, etc., etc. All that stuff is included generally with the packaging of new merchandise or on the label or included inside of or on the packaging. It's there. You should really, really seriously read it. It'll save you a lot of pain, effort, trouble, and problems. And just be responsible in general as an adult. And if you're not an adult, get supervision and permission from your parent or guardian. <coughs> but yeah, uh, heat guns and things like that are dangerous. And always having a window open, always covering a surface, making sure that your surface is something solid like a workbench, uh, a steel workbench, a wooden workbench, uh, not something that is like a padded vinyl covered folding table that will catch fire from the heat gun, whether you sit it on it or you just heat it near it. Uh, use common sense and be smart. I'm going to cover several things at once with one piece of foam. Now I took this foam and I cut it straight down the middle and then I contact cemented it back together. And here on the bottom of it, you can see I've put some cuts into the foam. These cuts don't go all the way through the foam. They only go about a millimeter or so into it on either side. And I put these cuts in using an X-Acto knife, which has replaceable blades. I just happen to like the curved one because it's great for doing curved cuts. Now, let's say you have some cuts that you put into foam that you need for definition that are right by an area of the foam that you have contact cemented. Sometimes the contact cement will want to pull apart. And sometimes it won't. But Okay, so to put enough heat in to really get the cuts that I put in to really start opening up, you'll notice the contact cement is wanting to already pull apart. Up here it's nice and flush, and down here you see it's coming apart. You can push that back together. The contact cement will want to go back together, especially once it starts to cool. Push it firmly on both sides. And if the top gets a little bit too warped, you'll notice how this is starting to curve up. You can correct this by applying heat to the rear and then flattening out your foam. Now you have your lines that you put cuts into that have now opened up and expanded and you have your piece stuck back together. This is also a similar case if you have to say heat an eyebrow shape or a cheekbone shape into somewhere that would have a seam. That is very much so the issue on this Batman cowl here where you can see the seam that runs from the ear down to the eye has the brow shape going right through it. And you run into a similar instance there. I will do a quick demonstration. Okay, you can see there, same scenario. 
I have pushed the brow shape in to the foam here and look what happens. The foam starts to separate. Same thing as before though. The contact cement, as soon as it cools, will want to go back together usually. Usually. Okay? But contact cement, like most adhesives, over time, any sort of glue like that that is made from chemical or natural substance does degrade and deteriorate. So you may notice in a day or so they may want to pull back apart again. Maybe not in like the normal areas where you contact cemented them, but where you applied heat. So once you get them lined up and as flush as you can on front and back, you can then take some super glue. and apply some to the back edge here. You don't need a lot, by the way, just a little bit. And you can see just a little wet, you can see a little glisten on there, just enough to seal it. Super glue, what it actually does, it does not work the same as other glues like contact cement. Super glue, whenever the oxygen hits it, if I'm correct, causes a reaction that essentially causes a chemical burn. And it just fuses the pieces together. So I will reinforce the insides of cowls and other things after I get everything heated and shaped and together before I seal it and paint it though. I will, re I will reinforce the insides by just putting a bead of super glue along the seam. I mention this in videos, but once again, I don't usually show it directly on video. So perhaps you catch it or perhaps you don't. And same thing on the outside. If for some reason the seam really doesn't want to go back together from the contact cement, you can take some super glue and put it along on the seam on both sides and just press, press and, and push and hold it together on your cowl for the amount of time specified in the instructions. Most super glues are 10 seconds to 2 minutes. But <coughs> longer set ones do take a couple minutes. Uh, the longer set ones are good if you need to specifically position something in place. The 10 second set super glues, it's kind of one and done like contact cement. If you don't have it exactly there, you can't really reposition it, so you have to have it right the first time. Okay, so to wrap up the video and do a quick recap of the things that we talked about here. Heat guns and hair dryers, great for large surface areas like trying to round out masks which I do go over that I feel pretty decently thoroughly in the videos. I show you guys the mannequin heads that I use. I put it on it, I heat it, and I smooth it out with my hand to get it round. So I didn't go over that in this video. But heat guns and hair dryers is good for that. Also good for things like expanding cuts and detail and putting impressions into foam to get texture. And ovens are great for larger things like making domed caps or having to mold something like a holster shell. Things like that are great. And of course, let's not forget, read the instructions, be safe, and follow all safety tips and warnings via manufacturers for any products, whether it's a hairdryer or a heat gun or any sort of glues or adhesives, exacto knives. Use proper safety gear. Be smart. Be safe. Have fun. Don't forget that. Be safe, but have fun. Uh, these are, of course, basics. They're basic concepts, ideas that you can, of course, yourself take and expand upon. There's always new things. There's always new ideas. There's always new avenues that creativity can take. And I love to see the fact that I come up with things and then people take those, including some patterns, and chop them up and put them together and create a whole new thing and do their own thing and their own spin on it. And it's given me ideas, which in turn has produced new projects for me, which then gives you new ideas, and it just keeps going and going and going and feeding one into the other. And that's how creativity and intelligence grows. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for coming along on this journey with me and being a part of that. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cosplay Basics. As always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.